Very good morning and welcome to the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha Television, your one-stop morning show for top stories from India and across the globe. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor and these are this morning's headlines. Join our journey towards growth and prosperity, says Vice President Venkaya Naidu to Indian diaspora in Zimbabwe. First high-level visit to the country from India in 21 years. Delegation-level talks with Vice President of Zimbabwe today. MOUs in mining, IT and power likely to be signed. World Bank chief says India's jump on ease of doing business index historic and unprecedented achievement in telephony conversation with Prime Minister Modi credits his unwavering commitment and leadership for performance. Ruby clocks the biggest single day gain in over 5 years surging 100 paise against the dollar on Friday. Election Commission directs the Mizoram government to remove principal secretary level officer on charges of interfering with poll process. Nominations underway in the state and Madhya Pradesh. 17 candidates filed nominations in Madhya Pradesh so far. Scrutiny of nominations for the second phase of assembly elections in Chhattisgarh today. Ruling Congress JDS Alliance faces major poll test in Bypos to three Lok Sabha and two Assembly constituencies in Karnataka. Voting underway in Balari, Shivamoga, Mandya, Ramnagra and Jamkhandi seats. 31 candidates in the fray. And India expected to gain as US agrees to allow eight countries to continue buying Iranian oil after it reimposes crippling sanctions on Tehran on 5th of November. President Donald Trump suggests he is open to a new comprehensive deal with Iran to forever block its path to nuclear weapons. First up, news on Vice President uh, Naidu's uh, Africa visit and Vice President Naidu started his official visit to Zimbabwe by addressing the Indian community in the capital city of Harare. The Vice President said that India and Zimbabwe share very warm and friendly relations. He added that both the nations have inherited a rich cultural heritage which has gained a vibrancy over the years. Though small in number, Vice President recognized the Indian community's contribution towards Zimbabwe's growing economy. He said that Indians here in Zimbabwe bridge the gap between the two countries. Naidu reiterated that India's economic growth is growing and with a current growth rate of 8.2%. He urged the Indian diaspora to look at the transformation that India is undergoing and asked them to join in India's journey towards growth and prosperity. He also invited the Indians to visit their homeland to witness the fast positive changes that are taking place here in India. I am pleased to that Indian community in Zimbabwe, though small in number, is making significant contribution to the progress of this country. As professionals in diverse areas and as entrepreneurs, you, are, you also serve as a living bridge between the two countries. Indian diaspora is, is really playing an important role across the globe. That's why government also is focusing on Pravas Bharatiya Divas. This January we are going to have Pravas Bharatiya Divas in uh, Varanasi this year. So I appeal to all of you who are interested, they can all participate in that uh, Pravas Bharatiya Divas. Feel proud that you are an Indian, you are a Bharatiya and feel proud that we have a culture, we have a heritage. You call it as Bharatiya culture, Hindu culture, Indian culture. So Vice President Evanke Naidu is in Zimbabwe for a three-day visit in the second leg of his three-nation visit. Now, this is the first high-level visit from India to Zimbabwe in 21 years. Vice President Naidu is expected to hold delegation-level talks with his Zimbabwean counterpart. Both the nations will also sign several agreements later today. MOUs including in the areas of mining, culture, information and communication technology and power are expected to be signed. India will also undertake upgradation of Hawange Thermal Power Station, 
for a $310 million line of credit. Venkaya Naidu will also call upon the President of Zimbabwe and they will also meet, she will also meet country's Minister of Foreign Affairs. And earlier in Botswana, the vice president held a roundtable meeting with the CEOs of several companies. During the meet, he interacted with businessmen and investors of both the nations. And he called on the president of Botswana before wrapping up the first leg of his three-nation Africa visit. Here are all the details. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu on Friday met CEOs of 26 Indian companies in Botswana. Addressing a roundtable of India and Botswana CEOs, Venkaya Naidu said he was happy to know that companies operating in Botswana have very few problems. He called CEOs a living bridge connecting both countries. India's growth now is because of thanks to the initiative of connectivity revolution brought in by the late Prime Minister Sri Atal Bihari Vajpayee. So that being the case, I have already suggested to this uh, Vice President and we will be taking up with the President also now that they should think of involving rights in expanding uh, railway uh, lines uh, here to take care of the transport problems. The Vice President said better connectivity is necessary for sustainable development. He highlighted India's outstanding relationship with Botswana while appreciating that the country provides ample business opportunities to Indian investors. And our farmers should be really encouraged to go to African countries and then take the land on lease and then really cultivate the land and then increase the production. It will be a in-win situation for both, both for India and African countries like Botswana. Naidu also invited Botswana and its companies to partner with India. He said India has a whole new set of opportunities that are opening up. The Vice President on Friday also visited the world's largest rough diamond sorting and valuing operation. The diamond trading company Botswana is a 50-50 joint venture partnership between the government of Botswana and the De Beers Group. <laughs> Vice President Naidu also called on the President of Botswana. During the talks, he said there is immense potential for enhancing India-Botswana economic ties. He welcomed the President's decision to join the International Solar Alliance. Panchanan Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha TV. On to some other news now. World Bank President uh, Jim Yong Kim has described India's jump in the ease of doing business index as a historic and unprecedented achievement. In a telephonic conversation with Prime Minister Modi, he congratulated India for the historic rise in rankings. He said it is a remarkable feat that a nation of over 1.25 billion people has achieved a rise of 65 ranks in a short period of four years. According to a statement released by the Prime Minister's office, the World Bank chief also said that this has been made possible in a large measure due to the unwavering commitment and leadership of Prime Minister Modi. He promised uh, the World Bank's unflinching and continued support to India's initiatives on the ease of doing business. And the Prime Minister, on the other hand, also thanked the World Bank President for the institution's continued guidance and support in India's efforts to improve ease of doing business. He added that the World Bank's rankings are a source of inspiration for India in its quest to improve ease of doing business. Remember, India improved its ranking on the World Bank's Ease of Doing Business report for the second straight year, jumping 23 places to the 77th position. India was ranked 100th last year. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated the MSME Support and Outreach Programme in New Delhi on Friday in a big boost to the sector. He announced that the GST-registered MSMEs will be granted loans up to 1 crore rupees within just 59 minutes. And calling it a Diwali gift for the sector, Prime Minister Modi announced a 12-point programme to give impetus to small businesses. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday launched the MSME Support and Outreach Program in New Delhi, stating that India has become an economic powerhouse because of the micro, small and medium enterprise sector. Prime Minister Modi expressed hope that these small businesses will give a new impetus to the industrial revolution in India. GST, as the country's so big tax reform, you have done it. You have done it with a lot of understanding and 
वैश्विक बाजार का भी मुकाबला कर रहे हैं देश में हुए इन परिवर्तनों की वजह से ही आज भारत चौथी औद्योगिक क्रांति का नेतृत्व करने के लिए अपने आप को सज्ज करके आगे बढ़ रहा है Prime Minister Modi announced 12 new measures to give a boost to the nation's second biggest employing sector. He called them a Diwali gift for the sector. The measures include granting loans of 1 crore rupees in just 59 minutes for GST registered MSMEs, 2% rebate on incremental new loans of up to 1 crore rupees for GST registered MSMEs. The government also increased interest subvention on pre and post shipment credit for exports by MSMEs from 3 to 5%. All central public sector enterprises will have to take membership of the government e-marketplace to facilitate online procurement from MSMEs by various government departments and organizations. It is imperative for government companies to buy at least 3% of their purchases from women entrepreneurs only. All companies with turnover of over 500 crore rupees will have to now come on trade receivables e discounting system platform so that there is no cash flow problem for msmes pm announced 6000 crore rupees to create 20 hubs and 100 tool rooms for technology upgradation msmes will have to file just one annual return on eight labor laws and 10 central rules easing compliance with environmental rules msmes will need single air and water clearance minimum government मैक्सिमम गवर्नेंस के मूल मंत्र पर चल रही है हमारी सरकार हर कदम पर आपको नियमों के जाल से मुक्ति दिलाने का काम कर रही है एमएसएमई के लिए मार्केट उपलब्ध कराने के लिए एक और प्लेटफॉर्म सरकार ने विकसित किया है जेम जी ई एम यानी गवर्नमेंट ई मार्केट प्लेस जब दो ढाई वर्ष पहले इसकी शुरुआत हुई तो एक बड़ा मकसद था सरकारी सामान की खरीद में पारदर्शिता लाने का To raid the sector of Inspector Raj, Prime Minister Modi announced that inspections of factories in the sector will be sanctioned only through a computerized random allotment. Inspectors will also have to upload reports on portal within 48 hours. Speaking at the event, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley said India will soon be among three largest economies in the world. He said in the past 4 years India has moved from the 9th to 6th position in the global economic landscape. The outreach program will run for 100 days covering 100 districts across the country. Mohammad Fateh Tipu's report for Rajya Sabha TV. And an ordinance to change the Companies Act to decriminalize minor offenses by companies specifically the MSME sector got the president's assent on Friday. The amendments pertain to restructuring corporate offences under the Companies Act 2013. The proposal to issue an ordinance to amend the Act was cleared by the Cabinet on Thursday. The Corporate Affairs Ministry, which is implementing the Act, has been looking at ways to promote ease of doing business as well as ensure better compliance levels. The ordinance will also transfer 90% of the cases to regional directors under the Ministry of Corporate Affairs from the National Companies Law Tribunals. In August, a government appointed committee suggested various changes to the act including restructuring of corporate offences and an in-house adjudication mechanism to ensure that the courts get more time to deal with serious violations. The committee also recommended uh, shifting 16 of 81 compoundable offences from the jurisdiction of special courts to an in-house e-jurisdiction framework. Company Adhiniyam mein ab tak aise pravdhan the, usse jude aise kanun the, jinki vajay se choti choti maamuli galtiyon ka अनजाने में हुई गलतियां उल्लंघन से आप लोगों पर आपको क्रिमिनल माना जाता था गुनहगार मान लिया जाता था इन छोटी छोटी गलतियों की वजह से कई बार व्यापारियों के लिए जेल तक जाने की नौबत आ जाती थी उसके लिए तो इज्जत ही सब कुछ होती है वो बेचारा बाद में कुछ करने लायक रहता ही नहीं मन से टूट जाता है 
छोटी छोटी भूल सुधारने के लिए आपको कौड़ कचहरी के चक्कर काटने पड़ते थे इस सब में आपका कीमती समय और पैसा दोनों व्यर्थ तो होता ही था आपके मान सम्मान को भी गहरी ठेस पहुंचती थी लघु और मध्यम उद्योगों को तो इसकी वजह से बहुत ज्यादा परेशानी होती थी मुझे आप सभी को ये बताते हुए खुशी हो रही है इन परेशानियों से मुक्ति दिलाने के लिए सरकार ने एक अध्यादेश लाकर के आई है अध्यादेश हमने जारी कर दिया And the Indian rupee on Friday clocked its biggest single day gain in over 5 years. It surged by 100 paise to close at 72.45 against the US dollar on easing crude oil prices and possibility that the US might grant waiver to India from sanctions on Iranian oil imports. Besides a bullish trend in the equity market and fresh foreign fund inflows provided support to the domestic currency which has witnessed a massive 150 paise rise in the last two trading sessions. Rupee was the best performing emerging market currency on Friday after Korean won which appreciated 1.45%. The rupee had gained 50 paise on Thursday. And the subscriber based under the Atal Pension Yojana has crossed 1.24 crore mark. More than 27 lakh new subscribers have joined the scheme during the current financial year 2018-19. The government of India guarantees that the pension benefits. States like uh, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra, and Karnataka are the top contributors in APY enrollment. The scheme allows any Indian citizen between the age group of 18 to 40 years to join through the bank or post office branches where one has the saving banks account. In breakfast news we'll take a very short break here don't go anywhere we'll be right back with more news. Welcome back President Ramnath Kovind who will visit uh, Uttarakhand today the president uh, will inaugurate the Gyan Kumbh a two day conference that will be held in Haridwar today to deliberate on methods to enhance the quality of higher education in the country hundreds of academicians from all over the country as well as education ministers of 18 states will converge in the conference about 1800 delegates including education ministers of states education secretaries policy makers university vice chancellors counselors college principals researchers and students from all over the country are participating in the conference uttar pradesh chief minister yogi adityanath and human resource development minister uh, prakash javrekar will also be present at the event and the president will also visit rishikesh where he will address the first convocation of aims there Let's get you all the election related news the election commission has uh, ordered the removal of a principal secretary level officer in Mizoram on charges of interfering with the poll process the election commission also directed that the principal secretary should be relieved of his responsibilities with immediate effect the order also said that he will not be assigned any work relating to Mizoram or deputed to Mizoram till the process of elections is over The order came after reports appeared in a section of the media that the state chief electoral officer SB Shashank had complained to the election commission and according to the EC order the presence of principal secretary home in the state government will have adverse impact on the conduct of smooth free and fair election process in Mizoram and shortly after this an umbrella organization of major civil societies and student bodies of the state demanded the removal of Mizoram chief electoral officer SB Shashank claiming that he had lost the trust of the people remember election to the 40 member assembly are slated to be held on 28th of november and the results will be out on 11th of december <coughs> and in chatisgarh the scrutiny of nominations for the second phase of polls will be held today nominations began on 26th of october for the second and final phase elections with the issue of notification 72 constituencies of the state will go to the polls in the second phase on 20th of November and 18 naxalism hit uh, constituencies will go to the polls in the first phase on 12th of November 
Meanwhile, the process of nominations uh, for the Madhya Pradesh and Mizoram began on Friday with the issue of notification. On day one, 17 candidates filed their nominations in Madhya Pradesh, voting for the 230-member Madhya Pradesh Assembly and the 40-member Mizoram Assembly will take place on 28th of November. And the BJP has released its uh, list of candidates for the forthcoming elections to Madhya Pradesh, Telangana and Mizoram. The party has released its list of 177 candidates for Madhya Pradesh, names of uh, 28 candidates for Telangana and 24 candidates for Mizoram. Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan will fight from Budhni constituencies and uh, State Ministers uh, Narottam Mishra and Yashodra Rajesh Sindhya will contest from Datya and Shivpuri respectively. The list was finalized after the Central Election Committee of uh, the party met under the presidentship of uh, Amit Shah. Prime Minister Modi and Union Ministers Rajnath Singh, Arun Jaitley and Sushma Swaraj and other members of the Central Election Committee also attended the meeting on Thursday. And voting for the bipoles to the three Lok Sabha and two Assembly constituencies in Karnataka has started. The polls are being, uh, are being seen as a litmus test for the ruling uh, Congress-JDS coalition. Bipoles to Shivmoga, Mandya and Ramanagara Lok Sabha seats and Balari and Jamkandi Assembly segments are taking place. Now There are a total of 31 candidates in the fray in all the five constituencies, though the contest is mainly between the Congress JDS Combine and the BJP. Counting of votes will be on 6th of November and among the prominent candidates in the fray is Chief Minister H.D. Kumaraswamy's wife Anita Kumaraswamy who is expected to have a smooth sail after BJP nominee L. Chandrasekhar withdrew from the contest and rejoined the Congress party. The by-elections have been necessitated after Yedhirapa and Sri Ramalu and C.S. Puttaraja resigned as MPs on their election to the Assembly in May this year. By polls to Jamkhandi Assembly seat was caused by the death of Congress MLA while Ramanagara seat fell vacant after Kumaraswamy gave up the seat preferring Chennapatna, the other constituency from where he had won. And news from Jammu and Kashmir, a day after senior BJP leader and his brother were shot down by suspected militants in Jammu's Kishtwar district. Police detained two bodyguards of uh, Anil Parihar for investigation and curfew was imposed in Kishtwar as a precautionary measure and government has uh, also set up a SIT to investigate the murders. The Jammu and Kashmir police on Friday detained two personal security officers of senior BJP leader Anil Parihar, who was killed by suspected militants. BJP State Secretary Anil Parihar and his brother Ajit Parihar were killed on Thursday night when they were returning home after closing their stationery shop located outside the old DC office complex in Kishtawar district. The Jammu and Kashmir government also constituted a special investigation team to probe the incident. Parihar was given two personal guards for security but they were not accompanying him at the time of the attack. कहा गया कि ये दुकान बंद करके अपनी घर की ओर जा रहे थे और एक हमारा वेटरनरी हॉस्टल है उसके साथ गली में वहाँ इनको क्लोज रैंक से इनको शूट किया गया जी। एसएसपी साहब को कहा गया कि सिट जो है वो कहाँ शूट करें और इन्वेस्टिगेशन जो है करने के बाद जो है ये मैं बता पाऊँगा। Meanwhile, massive protests were held in parts of Jammu. Udhampur and Katwa district against the killing of Parihar brothers. Protesters blocked the traffic in some areas of Jammu city and set ablaze tires, demanding elimination of the terrorists involved in the killings. Earlier in the day, the Indian Army staged a flag march in Kishtawar town in order to maintain law and order. As a security measure, curfew was also imposed in the area since Thursday night. Section 144, keeping in view the sensitivity of the टाउन मैंने इम्पोज किया ये क्या कहते हैं सेक्शन 144 देर आफ्टर उसके बाद मैंने कर्फ्यू जो है रात तकरीबन 11 बजे के 9 मिनट पे वो नाफ़स कर दिया है और आर्मी ने उसके बाद फ्लैग मार्च किया पॉलिटिकल लीडर्स हैव कंडेम्ड द किलिंग अनिल परिहार जी और अजीत परिहार जी भारत माता के सच्चे सपूत थे उन्होंने देश के लिए वतन के लिए 
अपने हिंदुस्तान के लिए मादरे वतन के लिए वो आज कुर्बान हो गए पूरा देश उनको नमन करता है किसी भी किस्म की हिंसा की कोई जड़ें नहीं होती हम सबको मिलकर हिंसा के खिलाफ लड़ना होगा और उन सब ताकतों को शिकस्त देनी होगी जो हिंसा का वातावरण यहाँ बना रहे This was the third attack on political workers in Jammu and Kashmir in the last one month. Last month, militants killed two national conference workers and a PDP leader in Srinagar in separate incidents. Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV. Let's get you all the international news now. The Trump administration is to reinstate next week all U.S. sanctions on Iran that were removed under the 2015 nuclear deal. The White House said that it was the toughest sanctions the regime ever imposed on Iran and targeted Iran's energy, shipping, and banking sectors. However, eight countries will not be penalized by the U.S. for continuing to import Iranian oil, which is expected to include India. The first tranche of sanctions on 7th of August had targeted Iran's ability to purchase or acquire US dollar banknotes, trade in gold and precious metals and make transactions related to the Iranian rial, the country's currency. The sanctions were promised in the month of May when President Donald Trump announced that the US was withdrawing from a 2015 nuclear deal with the world powers to limit Iran's nuclear program. Meanwhile, an Iranian foreign ministry spokesperson said that Iran was unconcerned at the return of sanctions. And in a big boost for newly appointed Sri Lankan Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa, a lawmaker from the main Tamil party defected to the Premier's side and was made a minister on Friday. The developments come even as President Maitri Pala Sirisena agreed to summon Parliament on 7th of November for a flow test to end the political turmoil in the country. Rajapaksa claims that he has now enough numbers to prove his majority and at least five of the ousted Premier Ranil Vikram Singhe's men have defected to his side. However, Vikram Singhe's United National Party says that they have handed over a motion of no confidence against new Prime Minister Rajapaksa. Vikram Singhe has refused to accept his dismissal, claiming to be the country's legitimate Premier. Remember, the President was under increasing pressure uh, from all quarters to reconvene Parliament after he sacked Prime Minister Vikram Singhe on 26th of October. Big story coming in from Pakistan where cleric uh, Maulana Sami ul Haq, known as the godfather of the Taliban, has been killed in the northern city of Rawalpindi. And there are still conflicting reports of exactly how Haq was killed. The cleric's son said that his father was stabbed multiple times in the house in Rawalpindi. But other reports say that he was shot dead. Police said that Haq, who is 81 years of age, was taken to a nearby hospital where he died. The motive for the attack is still unclear. No group has so far claimed responsibility for the attack. And soon after his death, a scores of Haq supporters rioted, damaging shops and vehicles in Islamabad and Rawalpindi. Haq was uh, the head of uh, the Haqqani Madrasa in uh, the north of Pakistan, where many Taliban members, including the group's uh, founder, Mullah Omar, had studied. He was also the head of his faction of uh, the Jamaat Ulema e Islam party. Meanwhile, Pakistan's President uh, and Prime Minister Imran Khan have condemned Haq's killing. And with that, we wrap up this edition of Breakfast News. Thanks for watching. Have a great day ahead.